Is it nice uh, having the van back, or are you still using the, the backyard toolbox occasionally? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty much in here. It's just like, this was Chris's van, and it's so frustrating because... So, like, I feel like this top drawer should be the stuff that you grab most of the time. Oh, yeah. There were seven torque wrenches in it. <laughs> and, and no Allen wrenches. <laughs> I've got bare feet, but I've got gloves on, so <laughs> my, my feet will be covered in oil. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to show you guys what, like, what's inside the resi and what that kind of does as far as function in the shock, and not just our shock, but everybody's shock. Um, so first thing, we got to get this spring off. Now... The reservoir looks a lot different than our old one. Mm. It had this little cover on it that you could take off with a five mil. And then underneath that, there's a Schrader valve, just like on car tires and some bike tires, things like that. Then there's a Schrader valve underneath that. Problem with these is that they take up a bunch of room that's not really utilized for the shock. You know, we've got this tall valve and then the plate and then the cap. So it makes this reservoir quite large for what it's actually doing. So it doesn't really have oil in it, it's just taking up space. This new one is kind of put at an angle. You take your little valve removal tool, same thing. This is just the stands, no tubes one for pulling out Presta valves or Schrader valves or whatever. That's just a little cap. And behind that is a Schrader valve threaded inside there at an angle so that it takes up far less room. Just kind of dump the air out of that. That's a just pumped up with a regular pump. And inside this thing is another snap ring can usually just pop this thing out by hand and this cover has a hole in it and a little hook so if you carefully pull out kind of make sure that it's even it'll just pop out underneath this is called the ifp and you you may have already said it but what does ifp stand for internal floating piston Okay. You can see that gold anodized piece there. The, what this does is it separates the oil from the compressed air in this reservoir. Um, and the main function, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this. When I push in the shaft, the IFP moves. I don't know if this will help, but if you think of this oil tub as a shock and you drop this shaft in there, the oil level rises and falls. Mm -hmm. So if you just had a sealed shock and you tried to compress it, you'd explode something, right? Because there's nowhere for the oil to go and you're trying to fit something extra inside the oil. As you cycle your bike through the travel, you're displacing oil. So something in here needs to move to let your shaft go into the, into the shock. Let's pull this thing apart. I will take off the main bearing shaft and piston. This is a performance series shock, so it doesn't have the high-speed adjusters. On the factory series, you'll have a high-speed rebound adjuster here and a high-speed compression adjuster here. But this is just a basic one I've been working on. This is the shock off my tall boy. Gotcha. This is where most of your damping comes from. And in the case of this shock, almost all of it because it doesn't have high speed adjusters this is your rebound valving 
and underneath that is your compression valving. So if you think of your shock sitting like this, you hit a bump, it goes this way and it opens these little valves. Then on the return, it's going this way and it's opening these valves. So gotcha. you can see in function, compression and rebound are the exact same thing. They're just doing it in different directions at different loads. For the most part, compression valving is lighter than rebound valving because compression is supported by your spring, whether it's a coil spring or an air spring or some other crazy spring you've developed. But compression needs to flow quite a bit more. Here's a main piston. Hmm. And you can see it has six big compression ports. And if yeah. you flip it over, that's the rebound side. And it has three pretty decent sized ports still. Hmm. The reason that's different is flow again. Rebound needs to be checked pretty heavily because it's fighting the spring. Whereas compression needs to flow quite heavily because it's supported by the spring. And as this shaft assembly, as you bottom out your shock, you're filling up this shock body with extra material. Mm. And that oil needs to go somewhere. Gotcha. And where it goes is, don't do this at home. <laughs> so this is the IFP. And all it is, is a separator. It just keeps the oil here and the air here. Mm. And this thing moves up and down in the reservoir as the shock compresses. So it's sitting here at sag point, say, and then as you bottom the shock out, it's gonna move up, then back, then up and back. Mm. So as the shock cycling, this is also cycling. Gotcha. to make up for the shock shaft going into the oil. And so the, the air side of the IFP, you are pressurizing that? Does Do you tune yeah. that in a certain way? Or is it you a set don't. pressure? People have tried. It's not a very good way of tuning shocks. Okay. Generally, you wanna run the lowest IFP pressure that you can because it keeps the shock moving freely and, and supple. It's not something you want to change. It, it is definitely something that is figured out in the lab and through testing. So if we recommend 100 PSI, stick to that 100 PSI. Everything you just walked through in regards to the IFP is effectively the same, whether it's coil, air. Doesn't matter. Okay. Even like little cross country shocks, they all have an IFP in them. It just depends on where and how it fun and how it's designed. They all function the same way. So this, this is a live valve damper out of a 32 fork. Okay. And this thing has a rubber bladder. Hmm. Similar to a lot of dampers. So, and what you'll see is when you push this shaft in, that bladder grows. Yeah. So it's doing, that's an IFP. You can see it's kind of flat there. Mm -hmm. And then when I compress it completely, it's round. Gotcha. Nice. So pretty much every form of hydraulic suspension has some type of IFP. Our grip suspension does it similar to a shock and then some of the other damper, fork dampers do it with the rubber bladder. But all of our high-end stuff does it very similar to our shocks now. <laughs>